Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know uh, uh, several of you have places to be. I've gotten uh, multiple emails from people regarding a big-time CYC basketball game or something like that tonight. So I, I get it, and uh, we've got a lot to cover. Uh, so first and foremost, I just want to uh, formally welcome everybody here tonight. Uh, welcome to the Class of 22, uh, 2022 Registration Night. Uh, this is actually the third year that we've done this. So if you've had older students, uh, students have graduated in the past, uh, this potentially is, is new to you. Um, we did it for a number of reasons, but we know there's a ton of information that we need to communicate to you. At the same time, we also know that you probably have lots of questions, questions about courses, um, run-of-the-mill things like transportation, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, three years ago, we conceived this night and put this night together to get everybody together to be able to get some of those nuts and bolts questions answered. Also, we want to make sure that um, as you guys start thinking about the courses you want to take, you can have the information that, that you need in order to make those decisions. We're offering uh, more courses than we've ever offered before to freshmen, and so uh, we thought it was important that you would have a chance to, to get to make those, uh, have those conversations. Before we start our evening tonight, I think it's important that uh, we start this the way we start everything, that's going to be with a prayer. So uh, let us remember that we are and always in the holy presence of God, and the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we give pause and we pray in silence uh, and thanksgiving for the opportunity to be here today. The opportunity to be with the members of the class of 2022, their families, uh, for all the work uh, that they've uh, gone through to get to this point. Uh, praying thanksgiving for uh, the work of their families as they've raised them, um, guided them, uh, and now uh, we'll be stepping in to help them uh, in this next, uh, in some of the most formative years of their lives. Our prayer today is for the members of the class of 2022, um, that they know the Lord's will, um, and they, we pray that they have the strength and the courage to do what it is the Lord expects us to do. We ask this as we ask all things in your name. Amen. amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, live Jesus in our hearts. Amen. All right. So first things first, uh, I want to mention just some quick housekeeping things. Um, Randy Gardner, you can see him up here, uh, runs our KCBC uh, um, production program, TV production program here, uh, we'll be recording this. Uh, so if you miss anything that I say, if I gloss over something that you're like, oh my gosh, I tried to take notes on that and I couldn't, this is going to be available to you online on our class webpage, which I'll talk a little bit about. This PowerPoint will also be available to you online. Okay, so I see lots of people ready to take copious notes, okay? Uh, you're still welcome to do that, uh, but this will all be online and available to you. So if, as you see email addresses and those sorts of things, um, you won't need to, uh, to necessarily get those down. Uh, first thing I wanna just briefly talk about is the placement test, which was most notable. It's the thing that most of you uh, did on Saturday. Um, you guys took the NWEA Measures of Academic uh, Progress. That is a test that we actually administer here at CBC. We do it three times a year to our students, okay? This is an online adaptive assessment. Online meaning, of course, it's taken on the computer. Adaptive meaning it changes as you guys answered questions. So as you guys answer questions right, it gets a little harder, okay? And so I'm sure some of you noticed that those questions started to get more and more challenging. That means you were doing well, okay? As you question, ask, answer questions wrong, they get a little bit easier. And will continue to do that throughout the test until they get to a point what we call, what they call a RIT score, a ready to learn score, okay? And this was that three digit number that you guys got at the end of the test. Um, moms and dads, you probably came home and said, mom, mom, I got a 258 on this test. And you're like, that's good, I don't know. Uh, you'll find out that is a good number. Uh, but what I do wanna point out is um, those numbers are then correlated to a nas they're nationally normed. So there, there are millions of kids all across the country that take those tests. They are now nationally normed. You will get these scores back tonight. When you leave here tonight, you're gonna to get these scores back. Um, one of the powers of this program that we have here, and we've seen this over the several years we've been running this program, the immediate feedback allows us a lot of things, okay? But one in particular is that when our students take this when they're here, and your sons will too, it allows us to get that information, get that feedback, and then to shift instruction in our classes based specifically on what we know your sons need, all right? So as we start to see needs arise based on these tests, um, we can start to make decisions on what we teach in our classes. And this is probably the most notable part of the program. We've seen our students now, uh, over the several years we've been doing it, our students are growing at, at twice and in some cases three times the national average 
on these tests, all right? It's simply because the way we use the data and then turn around and employ that data to better meet your son's needs. So this was a good baseline for us. Um, I do wanna make note also, um, this is only a placement test and it's just one piece of a lot of data that we use um, in order to help your son improve and ultimately um, our goal is to grow your son um, percentiles, uh, quartiles, and all those sorts of things. So, if your son's test scores aren't what you want, don't freak out, okay? I, I certainly understand that there's a lot of factors that go into test scores. I certainly understand that your son, maybe this was the first, you know, uh, big type online test that he's taken. Um, he was nervous when he was coming here. I had conversations with parents in the halls about um, he was throwing up, he was nervous, all those sorts of things. Um, it's okay. All right, this is just one piece of data that we use. There's so much more data that we use, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. As we shift gears now, um, one of the things that I want to point out is, again, a piece of housekeeping. Um, we have an updated piece that we've provided for you tonight. When we sent out, um, and you got the course selection worksheet in, in the mail, concurrently to us sending that out to you, we were having um, discussions over curriculum, in particular, the curriculum that was going to be offered to our freshmen. After sending that out to you guys, we then made some decisions that are gonna impact the course selections that your, your sons make. And so you'll notice that this part right here that you see is going to be a little bit different than say maybe the worksheet that I know everybody brought tonight, right? Did everybody bring that? Okay. I know I got a ton of emails. Oh my gosh, we lost it. What do we do? It's okay. All right. We've provided you with another one um, and actually a more, a more corrected one. Um, and so what you'll notice is um, the big change is, is going to come. We've got a new class. And again, if you've had students uh, who are older, uh, they've never had an opportunity to take the class we call Man for Tomorrow Leadership. Um, over the past couple of years, we've been trying to kind of identify, um, we all kind of have an idea of what it, what it means to be uh, brothers for life. What was a little bit more uh, uh, tricky for us to identify is what exactly we were expecting, those basic tenets that we were expecting for our young men the moment they graduate from CBC High School. And so we were able to identify four that we consider to be kind of our pillars. And if those four are guided by faith, strengthened by intellect, committed to justice, and prepared to lead and serve. And so as we started to kind of digest those, the next question was how do we roll those out to everybody and in particular to our freshmen? And so we felt like the best way to do that was to kind of encompass those things in a class that, that we're gonna call Man for Tomorrow Leadership. Um, it's a leadership class, but it's gonna teach them a lot of basic skills, all the skills that we think it's important and are necessary for our young men to compete um, in the world in which they're going to enter. And so there's gonna be more information out there about that, so I don't wanna spend too much time on it. But long story short, what we ended up doing was adjusting some credits so that it wouldn't be five and a half units required, but instead only five required, okay? Um, and, and so you'll see that there's some differences between your sheets, and I'll tell you what to do um, um, later. You'll see, though, everybody will still take a freshman religion class. Everybody's gonna take an English class. Everyone will take a math class. Everyone will take a freshman science class. Everyone will take one semester of a world history class, and everyone will take one semester of Man for Tomorrow Leadership, okay? And so that, I just wanted to make that note because that's something that uh, I know everybody's uh, going to kind of see those differences uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. I want to spend just a minute and talk about math, okay? For most of our students, Algebra 1 is going to be the course, all right? Now, um, we know some students are going to be past Algebra 1 and advanced past maybe even Algebra 1 into Geometry. And for some of our students, they're going to be past Geometry into Algebra 2 Trig. And, and so all of those things are great, okay? Um, we use, again, we go back to the placement test that they took on Saturday as one of our measures to determine if a student should move beyond uh, Algebra 1, if they should be placed in Geometry or Algebra 2 trig. If we think that's the case, we'll make the appropriate adjustment. One of the things that we hear continuously from our families, though, is, well, he's been told that he's taking Algebra 1 in his grade school right now. All right, and, and certainly I, I have no doubt that he's taking some algebra, but it, it is not necessarily equivalent to a high school, high school algebra course. All right, so we typically see it's kind of more of a concepts of algebra, um, algebra one, you know, kind of introduction to algebra one, those sorts of things. And so for us, our goal is, is mastery of algebra. 
in order to pass a student through to a, a geometry or from a geometry into algebra two. So I just want to make that point. Um, those are certainly discussions that I'd be willing to have individually uh, regarding your sons and in, in where they may be placed in math if, if you have concerns. Moving on then, um, with registration tonight, you're going to see that you guys have all been given an elective course sheet, a course selection sheet. There was one course that was omitted on that sheet, and it's a freshman health course. It was just something that we had inadvertently left off of there. Health is a required course for all of our students to take before they graduate. Most students will take it either in the freshman or sophomore year, so it's not mandatory that your son takes health his freshman year. However, I also know there's a lot of uh, students who like to get those, those required courses done early. And so that, if that maybe impacts your selection, that's just something you may want to talk about with your son uh, before you go and ultimately select your courses tonight. Um, you will also notice on the sheet that we've given you or the one you've brought with you um, that it is an expanded course selection. Uh, we're offering something like uh, 22 or three different uh, options that, that your son can choose from as a freshman. Three years ago, it was like 10. I think they had 10 courses, three of which were, were a language course, okay? Uh, we do offer a, a world language in French, in Spanish, and Chinese, all right? But CBC does not require our students to take a world language in order to graduate from CBC. We put that decision in your hands as a family. We know for most of our students, most major colleges are gonna to wanna to see a minimum of two years, okay? But there's some exceptions to that. For students who have diagnosed learning needs, in some cases they can get a waiver and not have to take a world language in order to gain college admittance. We also know some students who are going to performing arts schools wouldn't necessarily need a language in order to um, get, gain admittance into those schools. And so we let you guys kind of make that decision as a family, all right? What do you want your son to accomplish with his language? What, what's important? Is it important for him to get his two years and be done? Do we want to do that sooner? Uh, do we want to delay that a year? Um, we have lots of sophomores who will take their first year of Spanish in their sophomore year. We have juniors who will take their first year of language in their, in their junior year, okay? And so I want, want to make that point loud and clear. Keep in mind, uh, if you do select a world language, it is an additional kind of more core course. It's a, they tend to be pretty intense type courses. So if you have concerns about transition into to high school and all those sorts of things, um, you don't automatically have to select a language in your freshman year. You'll also find that we do have X period classes. X period classes are classes typically that happen before school or after school. Two most notable courses that you'll find are robotics and jazz band. These are X period classes, meaning if you're interested in being in our robotics program, on our robotics team, okay, that is an X period class, meaning it'll start at 7.30 Monday through Thursday. The same thing is gonna be true if your son gets invited to participate in the jazz band. Okay, there are going to be band auditions. Mr. Sharkey's out in Ross Hall can answer these questions further, but there will be auditions. And for students who ultimately get selected into the jazz band, that is an X period class as well. Okay, so you theoretically then would be taking eight credits of study, uh, eight units of study in your freshman year. Um, one last note that's not on this sheet or on this uh, slide is PE. You'll notice that PE is not an option for freshmen. Weight training is an option, okay, but PE is not an option. We made a change a couple of years ago in an effort to kind of provide flexibility for our students so they can kind of, in particular for students who are interested in taking uh, more AP college credit courses or just getting to take more of those, uh, those other kind of uh, neat electives that they might be interested in. We made the decision that we would allow team sports to count for one half credit of a uh, PE. So if your son plays one of our team sports, including the 14 different no-cut sports that we have, that would count for his PE credit if you wanted it to, okay? So starting in his sophomore year, he would have the opportunity if he wanted to take a PE credit, sophomore, junior, or senior, he could. And certainly weight training is an option and would count for a PE credit as well. Um, but um, just keep in mind that team sports are an option as a way to get done with, with PE credits, um, opening up your courses from there. We also do have an honors program. Our honors program is an accelerated program. A very select few will be invited to participate in the honors program. This is a program that was started in 2005, and it's, it's a pretty rigorous program, uh, taught at an accelerated pace, but it's designed to get guys opportunities for college credit while still here at CBC. Uh, right now, we offer 34 different college credit courses. Uh, we will have students out of this program graduate with in excess of 30 hours. Uh, some students will approach 40 hours of college credit. Um, invitations for this program will be mailed out next week. So this is a by invitation program. 
Uh, we're, looking for, we're looking at standardized test scores um, from 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. We're looking at placement test data, and then we're looking at core GPA from 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. In general, it's, it's uh, reserved for students who score at or above the 85th percentile, all right, and that's in general, and we're looking for at or above 3.5 core GPA or higher. Um, and there will be a meeting, a special meeting for that on Tuesday, uh, March 20th at 7 p.m. Uh, for anybody who will be invited. And like I said, those invitations will come out uh, next week. We do also have a learning needs program. We held a meeting um, in late February. If you were unable to make that meeting, I do want to encourage you, make sure you see Tracy today. Tracy tonight is going to be in Ross Hall. Um, she's there. But basically, our learning needs program is for anybody who has a diagnosed learning need. You're able to receive services here um, at CBC. What those services are are going to obviously depend on your diagnosis. Uh, but we want to make sure that if you haven't received that information, make sure you touch base with Tracy, uh, exchange information, and set up a meeting with Tracy uh, to talk a little bit more about that program. Okay. Um, when you guys walk out of here, you'll also be given an orientation envelope. So as you walk out tonight, you're going to head down towards Ross Hall. As you get down there, the doors are going to open and you're, there are going to be envelopes there. Every student is going to pick up one envelope. It'll have your name on it. Inside that envelope will be a lot of different information, but one piece of information that's going to be in that envelope are going to be your test scores. Okay? As you get those test scores, uh, you're going to pull them out. There's going to be a sheet for test scores, and then there's going to be kind of like interpret the test score sheet. Okay? Um, and you'll probably be baffled by both of them. Okay? Feel free to try if you want. Okay? But I do want to let you know that there will be an option for help. There's going to be somebody helping. Actually, Mr. Eichwald is up there right now. He's waving to me. This is really awkward. Hi, Mr. Eichwald. Uh, he's going to be the most marked man tonight. All right? So, um, uh, so we're going to offer him tonight. There's going to be some other people there that can help as well. Um, but if you don't want to wait in line, if you got a CYC championship game or you just want to get home, um, know that you can contact me. I can get you in contact with Mr. Eichwald in terms of like, trying to interpret test scores and, and all those sorts of things. Um, there's also going to be um, – there's not going to be any forms in there, though. In the past, we've packed forms into that little, that little envelope. And we've made the decision, so actually last year we started, but we made the decision that um, it just was overwhelming. There was way too many forms, way, way too many pieces of paper. And so we've placed them all online on our class uh, website at cbchs.org slash 2022 slash. All right, that'll take you right to this website where it's going to have all the forms. And I'll talk more about those forms in a little bit, um, but that's where you can provide all, you can, you'll be provided all those forms. And again, I see a lot of people scribbling that down. It's actually going to be on that sheet that we gave you, that kind of agenda that you walked in and we handed you. It's on, that that uh, link is on there as well, so make sure to, uh, to take a look at that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Ross Hall. So when you guys walk out of here, um, this is in general what you're going to see. Okay, now uh, don't make fun of my drawing. It's the best I could do. All right, so um, put myself out there. Um, but when you walk in, the first thing you're going to walk in and see on the left is going to be these tables right here. Okay, those are that's an opportunity for you to go and meet with those uh, representatives from those departments. As you guys started selecting your electives, you probably had a, a pretty similar conversation. Boy, improv looks really cool. What's improv? Or wow, I'd really love to take sports marketing. What's sports marketing, okay? So we certainly understand that. And I know we kind of guided you to potentially go check a look at that, the course guide, the online course guide, but maybe you're still not sure, or maybe you're trying to decide between two. This is your opportunity to go talk to those individuals, those representatives of those departments, to find out what actually goes on in those classes, okay? So I wanna strongly encourage you guys to do that before picking your electives, if you're unsure about your electives. Okay. Further, if you just need information about what is going, what goes on in the curriculum, uh, the course sequence in that in that department, um, if you want to talk to the math department about what's taught in freshman algebra, or um, you know, if a student wants to double up, those are all great conversations to have, and we'll have representatives from all of those different departments. In addition to that, then you're going to find some other things. You're going to find information about freshman leadership. I simply gave it kind of a brief introduction. This is a great way to find out a little bit more about freshman leadership or our leadership program in general. Right now, we have three classes that we're offering our students, um, and at some point, it's going to be four uh, that a student can take. You can take up, uh, up to four courses of leadership before he graduates. 
In addition to that, you're also going to see Mr. Hankin from our STEM program. Uh, this is one of our fastest growing programs here at CBC. There are so many incredible resources, which I'm going to highlight a little later. So if you're interested in STEM, I'd strongly encourage you to talk to, to Mr. Hankin. Um, you also find honors program, learning needs program, college counseling, guidance, academic support, all of that stuff is going to be available and that is going to be available right there in the middle. Okay, so you'll see the tables kind of set up there in the middle. Um, those would be great places to find out that type of information. On the, I guess it would end up being the south wall, all right, and then along the east wall, you're going to find kind of our co-curricular opportunities. Now, our clubs and organizations, it's not an exhaustive list. These are guys who are able to be here tonight, so um, feel free to stop by, interact with them. They'll kind of identify themselves. They have placards in front. You can learn a little bit more about them. Uh, same thing with our, our athletic programs. Feel free to stop by if you have questions uh, about camps, about off-season workouts, anything like that. Feel free to do that. The most important thing though is gonna actually happen along the windows, all right? And that's gonna be the course registration part, okay? You're gonna see, uh, as my good friend and assistant principal, Jerry, he calls it the bank of terminals, all right? So I've, I've just dated all of us if you know what I'm talking about, but you will see a bank of terminals at the uh, north side of the, uh, the dining hall, okay? When you leave here and when you pick up your envelope, if you know you're on a time schedule, all you need to go is go right to the bank of terminals, sit down, register for your classes, and then you're free to go. You don't have to, you don't have to hit any of those places if you don't want to. Um, if you know you're hustling, feel free to go right there. And there will be people there to help you, all right? We'll have National Honor Society students there. Uh, we'll have faculty and staff representatives there that can kind of guide you through that. It's pretty self-explanatory, and I'll talk a little bit about it here in a second. Um, but that's going to be the most important thing you do before you leave, okay? So make sure you, you don't leave here without, without doing that, okay? On the sheet I gave you, this is, I, I kind of referred to it, but I'll point to it again. You can refer to that sheet there. Um, you're going to see the after tonight. This basically talks a little bit about the forms that we need. It gives you the, the link to go to. Those forms are all forms that we are going to need by July 1st, all right, in order to kind of have your son officially enrolled, make sure we get all that information. Um, so if you can help us out with that, that'd be great. Um, it just allows us to kind of stay in time to make sure we're ready for your son when he comes, uh, comes to CBC in August. And this is what that home page would look like, just so you see. Okay, you're going to see there's a ton of links on there. The top part is going to be the forms that got to be returned. Okay, and then the bottom part is just kind of FYI. A lot of FYI information um, on, that sh uh, on that link. Okay, so make sure you refer to that if, uh, um, if you have uh, any questions. Okay, all right, so let's talk about the course pre-registration process, all right? It actually is a really, really simple process, all right? But I'm gonna walk you through it anyway, and there will be people there to help you as well, okay? So when you walk out of here and you decide, hey, I'm ready, I'm ready to register, I've got all my questions answered, I've talked to everybody I need to talk to, we know what we're selecting, okay? You head towards the computers, go ahead and grab a seat. All right, now, I say grab a seat, uh, students, I want you guys to grab the seat, moms and dads. I want your kids to grab the seat, all right? So I know that's hard sometimes to let that control go, but he'll figure it out, he'll be okay, I promise, okay? So now, gentlemen, when you sit down in the seat, this is gonna be the most important thing you do, okay? The most important thing you do. And then the most important thing of the most important thing you do is gonna be the first thing you do. And that's gonna be to select your name. Okay, now I know that's funny, but it's legit, okay? Uh, Last year we had some guys accidentally just select the wrong name, okay, and you registered for that kid's courses, okay, and that kid, when he came in second session to register, he didn't have a name anymore, he wasn't there, all right, and then we figured out that somebody had to register, of course, the whole thing, okay, so the most important thing about the most important thing is that when you sit down right there, you pick your name, okay, now, once you pick your name, hit continue. And this is what's gonna pop up, okay? Now, I know everybody can't see that. I'm not expecting you to be able to see that or anything like that. Okay, I just want you to have an idea of what the whole thing is gonna look like and then we'll break it down into parts, okay? So this is our course registration tool. Gentlemen, you'll get to know this over the next few years because this is a tool that we're gonna continually use as you register for your classes in your freshman year, for your sophomore year, and then for your junior, uh, junior and senior year, okay? So up at the top there, you're gonna see that is the, those are the core courses, okay? Right here in the middle are gonna be your elective courses, and then down at the bottom are gonna be your alternate elective courses, okay? 
Down here in the bottom right, I know nobody can see there. I'm impressed if you can. All right, you're gonna see total units, save work, and then submit, okay? So let's talk, let's just start with the top portion, the, the um, core courses, okay? There's only one thing you need to do in core courses, one, but everybody's gotta do it, okay? And that is select something for language. Now, notice I didn't say select a language. I simply said select something for language. So you can choose French, you can choose Chinese, you can choose Spanish, or you can choose no world language, okay? So something has to be selected there or it won't let you submit, okay? So whatever you decide to do, you can choose French, Spanish, Chinese, or no world language, but everybody has to check something there in order to move on, okay? Once you're done with that, all right, now it's, it's kind of the fun part. Guys, this is when you get to select your electives, okay? They're gonna be simple drop downs. Now, this is where it gets different for everybody, okay? Because everybody's gonna have a different situation based on what you select up top, based on what you're going to select, okay? For instance, if you're a student who's gonna do a world language and then is gonna do band, you're done, that's it. That's all you gotta do. You choose your world language, and then you come to this first, whoops, sorry. You come to this first part right here, you choose band, and then you can move down to the alternate electives because this number right down here, you'll see very quickly, is gonna say seven. And in order to move forward, that number has to be seven. Not six, not six and a half, not seven and a half. It has to say seven. You won't be able to submit or anything until that number says exactly seven. With that being said, if you're a guy who's not gonna do a world language, and you're not gonna do band, potentially you could be selecting up to four and maybe five electives right here, okay? Depending on the combination of things which you select, all right? So you will start selecting electives until this number down here says seven, okay? Once that number says seven, then you're gonna to move to the alternate electives. Now, this is where it's gonna be a little bit different from the sheet that you guys all have, okay? The sheet you all have would have said that the core courses are gonna equal 5.5, which means then your elective courses need to equal 1.5 to get you to seven. And at the beginning, I mentioned that we changed some things so that the core courses were only gonna count for five, which gives you two full credits of electives, okay? So just keep in mind that's gonna be a little bit different than your sheet that you probably brought in. Um, but again, continue to select those electives until that says seven, okay? When you get down to the alternate electives, this is something that's pretty important, okay? The alternate electives are going to be the things that we go to in the event that we can't get your first elective, okay? So if for some reason we can't get you one of your selected electives up there, we're gonna move down here. And you have to do these in rank order, okay? Hear me on that. You have to do these in rank order because if I don't get the thing I wanted up here, the first thing I want you to replace it with is this. And then the second thing I want you to replace it with is this. Now we were about 85% effective at getting our freshmen their first choice electives, but it doesn't always happen, okay? And so I wanted you to hear that loud and clear. Make sure you take time on your alternate electives and you will have to select five alternate electives in order to move forward with this process, okay? Once you're done with those five, okay, you'll have the opportunity right here to submit and you hit submit and then this sheet will come, this thing will come up right here. Nothing you need to do at this point, it's just kind of quickly showing you what you've submitted, okay? Now, if you make a mistake, we can fix it and all those sorts of things, but let's try to keep those things to a minimum, okay? So it's pretty easy, it's a pretty easy process. You'll see when you sit down, it's, it's not a real cumbersome process. If you have trouble, fellas, that's why there are people there, raise your hand, they'll come over to you and they're gonna help you, okay? Briefly, I wanna run through some announcements now before we get you out of here. First thing you guys, I wanna announce if you're not aware, um, maybe you've heard about it, maybe your sons came home and talked about it, uh, but we are really excited um, for a pretty important uh, thing that we're gonna do here at CBC. And uh, it's something that is gonna kinda of actually be in our current library space, but we're gonna, we're, we've been in the process of looking at how we can better use that space. And so we've arrived basically, at this point we actually had a meeting today, where we are gonna renovate that entire space um, and we're gonna open it um, coming up in 2018. 
so looking fall of 2018, uh, phase one of this to be completely open. We call this Innovation Commons, all right? And Innovation Commons is going to be basically a place where we put um, uh, spaces for students to collaborate, um, innovate, um, kind of start to learn outside of that, that normal classroom space. Um, and so we're going to start, our phase one is going to be focused on our STEM engineering program. As I mentioned before, um, the, the number of opportunities from this program are, are just exploding. And you can see them all up there, uh, whether it's the Bilk and Beams program, uh, where they learn to build uh, bridges and, and test loads, uh, the Boeing Glider Challenge, um, the hackathons, the mobile app development. Um, we've actually got a really vibrant aviation club uh, right now that's going. And actually, Mr. Hankin, um, I think, believe he just purchased a flight simulator, all right, uh, which I'll be spending most of my days up on a flight simulator, just because that'll be fun. Uh, but no, it's legit flight simulator. Um, a student will be able to graduate um, logging hours on the flight simulator, um, and the first few hours, if he logs it with an instructor, those would count towards its pilot, his pilot's license. So theoretically, a student could graduate with a pilot's license from CBC, which is, is pretty awesome. So um, we're gonna start with that, um, this side over here. Um, the other parts of it, so we've got STEM, we've got leadership, and we've got entrepreneurship. Those are the big three that we're really looking on focusing that we think are gonna prepare these guys for the world in which they're gonna enter. And so, um, Innovation Commons, what we need, uh, very simply, and I told Mr. Hank and I would uh, mention this to you guys, um, we need parents as professionals. If you're in any of these industries and you can help talk to kids, mentor kids, guide kids, that'd be awesome. And then if you have any connections in terms of like, hey, I can get you a tour of Worldwide, or I can you know, make sure we get you a tour of uh, Lambert and uh, get you to a plane, those sorts of things would be really, really cool. So I told Mr. Hank and I would, I would mention that, and so I am mentioning that. He's gonna be available out there if you wanna talk a little bit about our STEM program. Uh, of course, couple meetings here. Uh, honors program meeting March 20th, I already mentioned that. Makeup placement test is gonna be Saturday, April 7th. Thank you for bearing with us on that, that makeup date. Saturday, April 7th at 8.30 will be the makeup placement test date. We will contact you and remind you, contact you and remind you, and contact and remind you so that you're aware of that. If you are looking to test out of world languages, any of the three, Spanish, French, or Chinese, our world language placement test is gonna be Tuesday, April 10th, and Wednesday, April 11th, 4 p.m. in room 110. And this is by appointment. You can make an appointment tonight, go find the world languages table, all right, and go make an appointment if you decide you wanna test out. Or you can email Madame Schneider, and that's all, all of her information is right there. So, but you will need to test out if you wanna advance from a level one language. Um, one question we always get is summer school courses. They are on our website. Okay, so you'll see our website here, down here along the right-hand side. Again, just find that menu bar and you'll see summer school. That's a place where you can go to get all your summer school information if you're interested in taking courses over the summer. Of course, we do have our summer academy. Many of you guys have joined us for summer academy. Thank you for doing that. Um, this is going to include uh, both uh, sports and activities and enrichment. You guys are welcome to join us for Summer Academy if you so choose. You can join us for the sports and activities uh, camps with the exception of uh, football, baseball, basketball, and soccer. Okay, those have specific incoming freshman camps. Okay, so you would do the incoming freshman camps as opposed to the Summer Academy camps. Uh, but all the other activities you're welcome to do with us. And then you are welcome to be part of Enrichment as well. Okay, and so we're reformatting a little bit how we do that. So but I do wanna encourage you to check that out if you're interested. Okay, you'll also find in your folders tonight something called the Cadet Caravan. I won't spend a ton of time on this, but I really wanna encourage you to join us on one of these dates for Cadet Caravan. It's something we do right before the start of school. We understand that you're kind of leaving the, the comfort and the safety of the communities that you've built uh, at your, your current schools and you've been there for a while. Um, and maybe kind of move it into this new kind of big uh, environment that's not very familiar to you. You probably walked in and saw a lot of maybe unfamiliar faces. Relationships take time, they take time to build, and this is kind of a good starting point for all of us, all right? So we're gonna get together before the start of school and just be there to answer questions, meet new people, meet people from your, uh, from your areas. So I would strongly encourage you to take a look at that. There's more explanation about what it is in, in those dates in that folder that you're gonna get, okay? Um, freshman orientation, this is included uh, in those dates, those important dates that we gave you, uh, but it'll be those three days, and then the first day of school is Thursday, August 16th. OK, 
Okay, so just get your uh, kind of calendars uh, together there. All right, um, and uh, and with that, let me just see where I am. Darn it, I was one minute late. Dang it. These guys are going to bust my chops. So, um, so with that, hey, listen, I, I certainly uh, don't want to keep you guys any longer. I will be standing here because i got to do another one of these. Uh, we're welcome to stay for another show if you want. But from you guys, you guys are going to head out. You're going to turn left. You're going to head to Ross Hall and register. Hey, thanks for coming, everybody. Good night.